Hello and welcome to the fifth and final video in the Baselight Tools series. So today we're going to have a look at two operators, uh, the D-Spot tool and the Paint tool. We're going to go ahead and use the D-Spot tool to clean off some dust that's on the image. We're going to have a look at how you can use the Paint tool in the cleaning sense and also in how to duplicate parts of the frame. So let's get into it. If we play back our first clip here, you can see that we have a very dusty clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump to um, a bit of dust that we want to get rid of. Um, in this case, uh, we'll have a look at the bottom right here, and you can see that we have big bits of dust. We want to clean this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our dust cleaning strip, and we're going to insert a D-spot operator. Okay, so the first thing we have is a threshold. This threshold determines how aggressive the removal is. As common practice, I always like to set this all the way down to 0.01, .01 which is in fact the most aggressive. We'll get into what all these numbers mean in a second, and we can ignore the flow radius and flow steps for now. So, um, with my D-Spot tool selected and my threshold down at 1, I'm going to zoom into the image display using Command, Middle Mouse button, drag to the right. Zoom into my image here. You have to make sure that your overlays are turned on in the cursor view. And it's really simple, I'm just going to click and drag a little box over my dust. And they're gone. So if we tab along to the next frame, tab back to the previous, you can see that it has effectively removed the dust. So this is a temporal fix. So it's looking at the frame before, and it's looking at the frame after, and it's going, okay, that's what the middle frame should look like. It can effectively rebuild those pixels. So that's a temporal fix. There's a couple of things that we can do to these boxes. Um, on high motion shots, so if you've got a subject moving quite fast through the frame, you might want to change this to a spatial fix. So it would look at the pixels around the box and it would rebuild the center using what's around. To do this, if you shift click on one of these boxes, you can see that a dialog box appears. You can click in here and rotate either to the right or to the left, and that'll change your threshold for just this individual fix. And you can see that adjusting down here. I'm gonna do that. Also, what you can do is if you click this little square, this will turn it into a spatial adjustment. So it's a little look at the pixels around the box and rebuild it spatially. Now, I really don't like the spatial option. I don't think it does a very good job consistently, and I think the paint tool does a better job. So I'm going to show you how to use that for spatial fixes soon. Okay, so I've sort of messed up my fix here. I want to remove this fix. To do that, I'm going to go Control, Command, Click. Okay, so Control, Command, Click removes your fixes. Control, Command, Click. Fantastic. So let's jump along to one other fast motion bit of dust that we want to fix. So the man's getting up here and you can see that the dust is right on his shoulder as it moves. So if we zoom in and we lasso around the dirt, you can see that the dirt's gone, but you can see it's not very clean. Also, if we go ahead and remove the overlay here, you can see that we've got a really nasty edge. So this is no good. So I want to remove this. I have to put my overlay back on. Control command click to delete and I'm going to go ahead and add a paint strip so go insert paint now if I want to do a one frame fix similar to the d-spot tool with the paint tool um, I need to go up to my paint layer and I need to right click and go into dust busting mode if I don't select this and I zoom back out so if I paint something here and I tab forward through my shot you can see that the paint lasts for the entire strip so I don't want that. I want to just remove this one little speck of dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that with Command Z. I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to go dust busting mode. Now this is saying that I've already made a stroke. So what do I want to do? I'm just going to create a new layer. And you can see that this layer is now in dust busting mode. Okay. And you can see in this paint strip that the little keyframe icon has appeared. Let's zoom in. Okay, so you can see here we have a large circle, that's our paintbrush, and we have a dotted line around the circle, which is our feathering. We can adjust our feather using the hardness slider here. So if I adjust that down, you can see that our feather gets bigger. I'm going to leave that back at 75. And you can also adjust the width, um, the opacity, and the exposure of your brush strokes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to adjust my paintbrush to fit the size of the dust that I want to remove. And I do that by holding down Command, left click and drag and uh, now what I want to do is I want to select a source so I can paint over my dust um, so the way to do that I'm going to hover my mouse over my source I'm going to hit control option click and then I'm going to drag to the destination 
So now you can see I've got a little um, plus symbol, which is showing what source I'm painting from, and the circle, the paintbrush, is what I'm going to paint over. So if I click here, you can see that I've made a little circular brush stroke. So you can see that that's not a very good selection, so I'm going to undo that and try a slightly different source. So I'm going to hit Control, Option, and then I'm going to click and drag. Also, I'm going to hit Command, left mouse button, just to make my paintbrush a little smaller. And I'm just going to drag like that. Okay, still not a very good adjustment, but what you can do, which is really cool, is you can go over to um, these, these tabs here, and you can adjust for all strokes, or just your last stroke, and I can adjust the opacity and the exposure for my last stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and up my exposure. And also I'm going to increase my feather. Okay, so you can already see that helped. If we lift our cursor up the stack using the up arrow, for the purposes of this demonstration, it sort of shows um, what you can do with the paint tool. We're going to quickly jump back to the despot tool because there's one more thing I wanted to show you. It's these numbers here. If we change this to two frames back and two frames forward, we can start to really finesse what frames the despot tool is looking at to rebuild the fix. So if we go up here, for these specs up here, one frame, two frame, and then they're off. So if I use my standard despot tool, they wouldn't really work because it's referencing the frame previous and the frame ahead. So it's, it's sort of half doing it. I'm going to delete that with command click. So if I set the detect motion using frames to two frames behind and two frames ahead, and I go to the start of the dirt here and do a big box. Now, and do another one here. Now it's using two frames before and after, so it eliminates the spot immediately. Now you can see that if I have made a plus two, negative two adjustment, and then I change these back to plus one and negative one, it affects all of the fixes on the layer. So if you are gonna change the detect motion using frames, I would add another despot strip, and I might name it something like, you know, despot minus plus two, right? And now you know that this strip is just for negative two plus two adjustments, and then you could add another despot layer for negative one plus one adjustments. Whenever you do any sort of fixes, they will appear as keyframes in the keyframe bar. Um, so you can skip to all of your despot layers using the square brackets. Square bracket right and left will jump you to your different despots. So that's a useful way of navigating. Um, oh, and last thing, last thing while I remember, once you lasso a shape and make your fix, um, you can just left click once and it'll automatically create that same shape. When you create a slightly different shape, left click it will automatically create that. So if you're doing a lot of fixes, um, you can create one little box that kind of works, and then you can just left click, left click, left click. So that saves you a bit of time. Okay, and we'll look at one more thing before we go, which is using the paint tool throughout the shot instead of a temporal one frame fix. So if we skim through this shot, you can see that we have a character coming in and sitting on the couch, okay? Now, say the client says, I want to paint him out. I want this just to be a complete wide shot of the lounge, but say we only have this one frame here before he starts to walk in. Well, what we can do is we can go up, add a paint layer, and instead of uh, turning this into dust busting mode, we're going to leave it, and we're going to go to this clone offset tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to absolute frame, and you can see that the current frame it's going to reference is frame zero, which is the first frame of this shot. Um, but if we wanted to make sure, we can go set from cursor which will set this frame depending on where the cursor is in the scene. And now what we can do, if we scrub along to the end, so we have our actor walking in, like so, and the client said, can we please paint him out? Well, now we can. Our clone offset is referencing the first frame of this shot, which didn't have him in it. So I'm gonna go ahead, command, left click, drag out, then just left click and paint over him. So the applications of this are, when you have a boom that comes into the corner of your shot, and you've got a locked off shot, 
you can add a paint layer, go back to where the boom wasn't there, you can take your clone offset and then you can just paint over it. So it's a really useful tool for um, QC fixing. Okay guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video. Um, I've spent far too long dust busting. I want to give a shout out to James Clark and Lizzie Newsham. They made me really good at this, uh, which I don't know whether I can thank them for, but I spent hours cleaning film footage. Hopefully this is helpful for any poor sucker who's out there cleaning film at the moment. Best of luck. But otherwise, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, share these videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.